What's up, everybody? This is Julia Jesse from Converge Media. This is another beautiful episode of Clapback Culture alongside my co-host, Mike Davis of the South Seattle Emerald. What's up, Mike? I'm doing good. I'm doing good, man. Chilling in the studio with my guy, Cuddy, flying solo tonight. So uh, I'm hoping that it's smooth. What's up, Cuddy? We got Cuddy in the wings in the back tonight, so you know we're going to have a good show Thank you again to everybody who comes in every single week. Make sure you guys share this stream so we can get more viewers. We want everybody to know what we chopping it up about tonight here on Clapback. You know, because Mike Davis doesn't have any social media, so I'm the only one who promotes the show. I promote the show. It's word of mouth. I'm telling it everybody. You know, but you know, I just appreciate everyone who comes in on a regular and they come and vibe with us. So that's okay if you don't promote it because we got people like Dora on here, Leon on here who always come through and share and clap, 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 clap it back, you know, with us. So let's just talk about what we're going to talk about tonight. So on the menu tonight, you guys, we got a real good show. A judge declared a mistrial in Simone Biles' brother her brother lat, uh, back in 2018 was charged with three counts of murder. So we're going to get into that because it was a whole mistrial in Samo. That was some drama. I didn't know this, but Apple rolled out a new major privacy protection like rollback, which was yes, dope. Yes. We'll talk about one. that. Of course, we got to talk about the, the drama that is Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene and her comparison to wearing masks to the Holocaust. And uh, Texas is now allowing or is looking to allow unlicensed carry of hand handguns in the same week that San Jose experienced a mass shooting. So we're going to talk about all of those things. We might as well just get right into it. So... First on the menu tonight is this mistrial. So a judge in Ohio declared a mistrial in the murder trial of the brother of the number one gymnast in the world, uh, Olympic uh, champion Simone Biles, after jury said they had read legal paperwork that inadvertently included, that was inadvertently included in their evidence um, given to them in review. And basically that evidence also had um, some of the um, legal briefs that were from the defense saying that he shot these people in self-defense. So the clip we're going to watch is actually taking a look back at how Tevin Biles got to trial um, after the events in a 2018 New Year's Eve party. So let's take a look. He's the big brother of superstar gymnast Simone Biles. Today, Tevin Biles Thomas is wearing an orange jumpsuit and shackles on his feet after being charged with triple murder. 
The brother of Olympic gymnast Simone Biles charged in connection with a triple murder. The 24-year-old was arrested at an army base in Georgia. He's active military. He's accused of opening fire after an argument broke out inside this Airbnb rental in Cleveland. Three young people were gunned down. Somebody just got shot at a party at where? Somebody just got shot at a party? Two people did. Is there any serious bleeding? They're, they're, they're both dead. The third person shot died later at the hospital. It happened on New Year's Eve, but the arrest was just made after an eight-month investigation. In a cryptic tweet last night, Simone wrote, Eating my feelings. Don't talk to me. On Friday, USA Gymnastics issued a statement. In this challenging time for Simone Biles and her family, USA Gymnastics offers our continued support. This is a very personal and private situation for the Biles family. Here at Inside Edition, we got to know Simone when she was our special correspondent for Super Bowl 51. Tevin Biles Thomas will be arraigned next month. So... Tevin Biles was arraigned, detained, and got a jury, started the proceedings at court, and then, boom, during deliberations, all 12 jurors, that's everybody, basically came back and said, okay, in this paperwork that we received, we read some legal briefings of the defense attorney and the prosecuting, the prosecutors going back and forth in argument um, determining, arguing over Biles uh, might have acted in self-defense. And they all said that this paperwork had influenced them. So the judge is calling for a new trial, wiping away clean slate and um, jury selection be begins on Wednesday. So to be clear, he does, he didn't just get off. No, uh, the trial just restarts from ground zero. Right. Exactly. Oh, and they have no idea how the paperwork ended up in evidence or in the hands of the jury. So this was crazy to me. It really is not being um, promoted or talked about. Um, but man, it's it's a crazy story. I don't I mean, know. Yes. I mean, we're talking triple murder. Yeah. I mean, when I saw that story, I didn't even know what to make of that. The three people got killed. I'm surprised it wasn't a bigger story, but I mean, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So allegedly little background and we won't stick on this too long. Little background there. It's a it's a party. I don't know if he's throwing it, but allegedly three individuals come to the party that were not invited. Some type of conflict ensues. And then there's this shootout. Two people died at the scene. One person died at the hospital. Allegedly, it is the shooter is uh, Tevin Biles. And yeah, so he's got he's got a lot going up against him. But I thought this was a lot. Right. Because Simone Biles is also, you know, on top of all her major accomplishments, we know, like right now she is training to go to the Tokyo Olympics. And, you know, let us not forget, like if you watched, I think she did a biopic and she talked about, you know, um, her mom being drug addicted. She was in foster care for a while until her grandparents adopted her. So her and her brothers, um, you know, have had a pretty difficult life and she has, you know, risen above all of that. You know, she also was a survivor to Dr. Nasser, uh, who is that creepy pedophile who went under the guise as a doctor and molested all of those young girls and uh, cowardly committed suicide when he was sentenced to over 100 years in prison. So this is a lot on, on our good sis, Simone Biles. And so I just want to send prayers, love and affirmation headed her way. Good luck in the 2021 or 2022 Absolutely. Olympics, whatever it is, whenever they're going to do it. But the Tokyo Olympics coming soon. Yes. Major shout out to her. She just she just did that move that everybody thought was impossible. She was yeah. like the first woman to do that flip. And I can't describe it, but I seen it and it was amazing. So <laughs> shout out to her for her perseverance. So we're going to move on to our next story. So Apple, I did not know this, Mike. Did you know this? Um, I missed it. I know that this was dropped like earlier this month, but Apple users now must opt into third party apps tracking their online activity before customers could only opt out of data tracking. They have a really cute commercial that I watched today on YouTube, but we have a clip that's going to explain this uh, new privacy protection. Let's play it. 
You know how it goes. You search for something online, then see an ad on Facebook or Instagram for that exact item. Well, Apple is making it harder for apps to track your online activity, but that's putting Apple at odds with companies like Facebook. When you're using apps on your iPhone, you may start to see this. Apple users must now give permission for apps to track your online activity data before you could only opt out. It's about time. Jenny Gephardt is with the privacy nonprofit, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. Switching from opt out to opt in is huge. That is what's going to really make a lot more users opt out of this tracking feature that wasn't built for users, it was built for advertisers. But companies like Facebook and Google generate billions in online advertising, harvesting your data. Facebook said Apple's move will harm their small business advertisers and is about profit, not privacy, even buying a full page ad in the New York Times. Being able to track iPhone users is immensely valuable. And one of the ways you can see that is the kind of melodramatic indignation from the tracking industry, from Facebook. Facebook. Facebook is trying to put forward a, a sympathetic group, small businesses, as the, as the beneficiaries of this third-party tracking and surveillance ecosystem, when in fact, Facebook is the one profiting off of it. Do you see Facebook's response as melodramatic? Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> it is laughable. It's going to kill us. It's going to kill us. But for Monique Wilson Debriano, who was featured in a Facebook campaign and owns Charleston Gourmet Burger, the change has already affected sales and she's had to cut costs. It's not about, you know, small businesses, you know, wanting to take away anyone's privacy. All we want to do is really just service our customers better. So if someone loves hamburgers and they're looking for something that is just awesome, you know, to make your hamburgers taste better, I would like to show my ad to you. And this update takes that away from small businesses like mine. This week, Apple CEO Tim Cook continued to push privacy as their priority. Should people believe that or do you think Apple has ulterior motives? I mean, it's hard to read the mind of, a, of an entity, but I think that users should believe that Apple is building its brand and staking its reputation on privacy. Well, I'm, I have a lot of thoughts on this. I'd like to hear yours first, Mike. Go ahead. <clears throat> first of all, does Apple have an ulterior motive? Absolutely. We don't know what it is yet, but I am not going to sit here and pretend like for one second, I believe that Apple is taking a stance for me. But that being said, I'm all for this 100%. I, I've never been a fan of companies being able to profit off of my personal data without giving me a piece of the pie. So I'm not here for no tears from Facebook. And yeah, that was a great strategy, trying to get that black business and oh. trying to put that black woman out in front of this. I but I'm know. not here for that. If I want to buy a burger, then I can Google best burger place around me. And if your business pops up, your business pops up. But if I'm having a conversation in my house and I mention burgers and then my phone picks that up, and now I'm getting targeted advertising about burgers, that's an infringement on my privacy. And that's what the phones have been doing. I'm going to download this iPhone update tonight because I'm for sure trying to opt out of that targeting advertising ASAP. This wouldn't be clapback culture if Mike Davis didn't start out with a clapback towards Apple. So um, I want to know what you guys think in the comments. I see a couple of you guys saying that um, Dora even said, I think I can handle picking my own burger. I think, in fact, um, that is exactly the read that I got. You know, Facebook, you got you're, you're taking such a. Oh, we just see right through you. You're using a black woman, a black small business owner to pander us and make us feel bad. Oh, the sad tears that are being just given to us. I don't believe it. I don't care. Honestly, before there were Facebook ads, small businesses were getting their information out. So, I mean, they'll find another way to get people to buy their burger marinade. OK, I don't want a bunch of ads. I hate when I go online and I start looking at something and then it gives it to me right back in an advertisement. I don't want that. I want, you know, don't tell me that I left a bunch of stuff in my shopping cart. I don't want that. You know, it's it's I just want my privacy and I really love this. I can't wait to update my phone. I'm glad that this was discussed. It is a step in the right direction. And again, Apple is better than Android just for this alone, you know, and so. 
you know, another for Apple. You know what I'm saying? Another, just another, another, another. Bravo, yeah, Apple. For real, yeah. Leave those targeted ads to Android users. You got the <laughs> three or four of them. Go market to them, but let us live. Yeah, Android Not users probably want the burger marinade. <laughs> they want it. So give them what they want. So I'm with it. I'm for it. This is good. Um, I think I saw a comment from Leon. He said, I think this is basically a good thing, but is this really making a dent in the surveillance that goes on these days? In fact, I thought about that because let's talk about this. Yes, you won't be able to like track me and what I'm shopping for, but if there is a subpoena and they want to look at my call log and my text history, uh, the government can absolutely subpoena Apple and get those records. So does it really matter if I was shopping for burger marinade or not? Not really. I don't, I don't think so. And I'm also curious to know, like, with this new update, is Apple saying that they are no longer going to store this data or are they no longer going to share this data because I can also see Apple trying to maneuver to make themselves the sole owner of all of the data for iPhone users so that they can then go market and distribute that data as they see fit. So I, I, I'm definitely not looking at Apple as the good guy, like yeah. they're just doing the right thing, but this is a step in the right direction to help me not have my data just going every which way the way that it would be now. I mean, it almost doesn't matter. I mean, let us not forget the movie Snowden. I mean, that's a real thing. So what are we talking about? I mean, if the government wants to look at anything you're doing, there's a whole bunch of contractors that are sitting in a small room being able to tap into these microphones, tap into these videos and see exactly what we're doing. So it mm, doesn't really matter that you know what I'm shopping for, but you know, you can see that's exactly what I'm doing. And, and shout out to all of y'all out here spending your whole life on Facebook, spending your whole life on Instagram. You're giving your data away for free anyway. So for a lot of y'all, this don't matter. because <laughs> Is that why you don't have social media? Uh, that's not the whole reason, but that it definitely factors in. I just I don't like people making profit off of me. Um, I also generally don't care about a lot of y'all's lives. No disrespect. <laughs> But I mean, I just don't care about that kid from high school. I ain't seen since high school or pictures of their baby. But that's just me. <laughs> y'all, y'all do what you got to do. I would throw some shade at your high school, uh, but we going to leave it alone. Which high school? Anyway, <laughs> we're going to move on. Number five. <laughs> Look, we're going to talk about the ridiculousness that is Representative Marjorie Taylor Greene. She is being criticized for comparing COVID-19 measures to the Holocaust. This lady is out here tripping, y'all. This is the same lady, the same lady who got into it with uh, Ocasio-Cortez, with Congresswoman Cori Bush. Uh, Cori Bush, she's out of control. So let's take a look at this week's episode of Marjorie Taylor Greene says whatever the hell she wants. This morning, turmoil in the Republican Party on Capitol Hill. House Republican leader Kevin McCarthy condemning Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene after repeated comments comparing mask mandates and COVID vaccines to the Holocaust this week. After she responded on Monday to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's mask mandates on the House floor. We can look back in a time in history where people were told to wear a gold star and they were definitely treated like second class citizens, so much so that they were put in trains and taken to gas chambers in Nazi Germany. And this is exactly the type of abuse that Nancy Pelosi is talking about. GOP leaders did not immediately publicly respond, but Green continued on Twitter. Writing Tuesday of a news report, vaccinated employees get a vaccination logo just like the Nazis forced Jewish people to wear a gold star. Leader McCarthy finally weighing in, saying in a statement, quote, Marjorie is wrong and her intentional decision to compare the horrors of the Holocaust with wearing masks is appalling. Adding, let me be clear, the House Republican Conference condemns this language. But McCarthy did not say whether Green should face punishment. Republican Congressman Adam Kinzinger tweeting, while we cannot stop her from calling herself a Republican, we can and should refuse to let her caucus with the House GOP. It's so beyond reprehensible that it's, I mean, it, it has no place in our country. Do you think she should be expelled or censured because of it, Madam? I think that she should 
The conservative firebrand and frequent Trump ally has a history of incendiary behavior, including harassing a Parkland shooting survivor, supporting the QAnon conspiracy theory, and backing President Trump's false claims that he won the 2020 election. So despite the widespread condemnation, Green has not backed away from her comments, writing in a statement sent to NBC News after McCarthy's criticism, quote, I'm sorry some of my words make people uncomfortable and accusing Democrats of anti-Semitism. So far, Republican leaders haven't taken any action to punish Green for her comments. Well, I mean, again, another episode. This lady is like ignorant. Like if ignorant had a face, it would be right. Like it would be her in the dictionary for sure. Anti-Semitism has no place in our country, in this world whatsoever. It is appalling that we have a political leader. Um, I mean, she's been stripped of all her committees, but she's still allowed to create legislation. Like, I can't believe that we still have somebody like this in Congress. What do you think? I just don't understand what her angle is here. I mean, what she says on its face doesn't even make sense. I mean, you, you can't compare proof that people have been vaccinated or choosing to wear a mask with the gold star that people were forced to wear during the Holocaust. Like, it's just so far away from the same thing. I mean, it's not life or death. Like, our government isn't going to round people up for not being vaccinated. You're still free to live your life as you please. I mean, we don't even check if you're vaccinated or not. I mean, people can say they're vaccinated and not be, and we're not even allowed to check whether that's accurate or not. So like, there's just no, it's ignorance. I, I think you said it best. It, it's just an ignorant statement for her to make. And I guess I'm just trying to figure out what her angle is here or like what constituency it is that she's playing to. Cause at this point it seems like she's also starting to piss off Republicans as well. So like, I mean, where is she going with this and why does she continue to say things like this that don't serve anyone? Well, that's the thing. It does serve. Uh, it serves the people that continue to invest in her and continue to invest in the party. My question is, why isn't her own party dragging her and, 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 and dragging her up out of here? I mean, they can't oust her because she is an elected official. But to your point, you're right. Like, who is voting her in? But guess what? Her party is not dragging her because they know that she's infusing capital into the party. I mean, this is the same person who believed in QAnon and, and the whole conspiracy there. This is the same person who pushed this idea of election fraud. She's the same person who said that Jewish lasers caused California fires. I mean, when we talk about the Holocaust, we're talking about six million people that were killed that were this. The Holocaust was meant to wipe out people. How does that have to do anything with someone wearing a mask during a COVID-19 pandemic? Something that it, it's just it's absolutely disturbing when we really go back and look into history. We're talking about medical experiments being done on these people. Just a lot of disturbing, inhumane things. And. Let us not forget that this is not just something that we talk about historically. There are still Holocaust survivors that are living on this earth that have families that are still carrying the burden of these stories and their in in the fact that this happened to them. And so I think it's disgusting. I think it's appalling. Um I think that you know we have to be careful on who we allow to take public office. We need to hold these people accountable, especially the people uh, writing history. I mean, this is a person right now who is going to be in our history books and sh the audacity that she has to say that the January 6th riots um, were, were almost, um, that she feels emboldened that these things happen and continue to just perpetuate lies on top of lies. I mean, she's been aggressive, like I said, to Congresswoman Ocasio-Cortez. So, uh, she's been um, aggressive and made Congresswoman uh, Cori Bush feel unsafe, so much so that she had to move offices. She's the same person who continues to target marginalized groups 
and and even said that this there was an invasion islamic invasion coming into into government so i'm not shocked i'm not surprised i have a, the same feeling as nancy pelosi who so beautifully wore a katenge mask honey she keeps coming with the kente cloth doesn't she but i will say that i'm not shocked i'm not surprised and it's people like her that we have to no longer give a platform to because they're dangerous uh, I, I agree. Everything you said, uh, you hit it on the head. I just, it's embarrassing, honestly. Oh, yeah. Uh, American politics has this way of like playing out throughout the world. Like the rest of the world follows American politics in a way that we as Americans don't tend to follow other people's politics. So when we have an elected official in our country stepping out and saying things like this, it's an embarrassment for all of us because there are people, plenty of people, like you said, that voted for her, that support her, that are still donating money to her. There's a whole political party that is not going to ask for accountability, that has not like jumped out to condemn this or take any tangible steps to even stop her from saying these things. I mean, there are individuals within the party that have spoken out against these specific statements, but they still support her rhetoric as a whole because they still coexist and allow her to exist. So, I mean, on top of everything that you just said, I just would add that this is an, an embarrassment for American politics. I want to bring up one last point before we go to break. But uh, Mama Mama Harriet said, "Wow, whiteness is on for on on Front Street." I thought about if Marjorie Taylor Greene were a black woman, could she would she ever be able to to do so many things and say so much uh, garbage out her mouth and get away with it without um, being reprimanded? I mean, is that could could we ever see a time where a person of color, particularly a woman of color, um, say things that just are not true, make uh, accusations and claims and comparisons to things that are not real and almost rewrite history? Could something like that happen? <laughs> uh, I, I, I highly doubt it, especially not in a political party because that person wouldn't get voted for. I mean, we we have people like Candace Owens, who eh, I wouldn't really call her black, but white folks use her as a black face to put out there. But I, you wouldn't be electable in America if you were a black woman with rhetoric like Marjorie Taylor Greene's. Absolutely not. Huh. Well, um, as we see in the comments, you know, she's building the GOP for the next election. I we better be ready. Um, I do feel like Donald Trump is going to run again if he is not indicted and or still under current investigation. But please let us not forget that that was a very tight election. Um, and they're going to hold that Trump Republican Party as strong as they can. We know that ad dollars get to people, Facebook ads, um, all the, the lies. And I mean, people don't people almost don't care that it's a lie. As long as you hear it over and over and over again, you just believe it. You don't want to read. You just take your news from the source that you take it from. And you just keep continue to have like this recycling of lies and just stupid, ignorant information. You don't fact check it. And then when you do fact and then when you see the fact check, you don't believe the fact check. You're, you're absolutely right. And I'm not trying to be the anti social media guy that you always try to paint me to be. <laughs> but in a large part in our society, I, I do think that that is one of the ill effects of social media and our addiction to social media. For so many sure. Americans live their whole lives in an echo chamber. And that goes for people on the left just as much as it goes for people on the right. They surround themselves with people that give them the rhetoric that they want to hear, people that are going to say the same things that they already want to believe. So when they get misinformation, they're willing to take it as fact because them and everyone that they follow and everyone that they already agree with agrees with that false rhetoric. Yes. So the ability to spread misinformation is so easy now because Americans just get dumber and dumber and dumber. And instead of like reading and fact checking yeah. and going to sources with journalistic integrity, people are just going to social media and it's having an adverse effect on actual journalism because yes. now 
real journalism is so hard to fund because so many people don't need that newspaper anymore. Or they don't even want it. So now it's like it's just a, a race to the cash. And I mean, money is just tearing us apart from every angle. So I, I don't know what's going to happen with facts as we move forward. And I think you're absolutely right about Donald Trump trying to position himself to run again. And when I see these types of things from folks like Marjorie Taylor Greene, it, it's just a constant reminder that those Trump Republicans are still out there. They're not going anywhere and they're still holding strong. So we'll see where this goes next election. I, I want to say one thing that you brought up that I just couldn't agree with you more on social media absolutely is an echo chamber. And I really hate the algorithms because what happens is, is the social media platform gets to dictate what information you see. And to your point, you continue to be fed the things that you want to see and you never get a different perspective. And it's so critically important that there's transparency along all lines. You can't just fall into what you like, because then you'll never know what else you like if you don't try something else. And so I often find myself having to dig, search and find and seek out information on the opposite side, which is why I watch Fox News just as much as I watch CNN or MSNBC and read different local papers and bloggers and get on social media because I need to be able to put together my opinions and facts based on all the collective information that I have. And a lot of people don't want to put that time and effort in. So I think it's critically important that you listen to both sides. You have to. Um, and with this algorithm, it just feels like it's not quite possible. You're absolutely right. And it's it's the time and effort piece. I think that that's what it is. And as technology advances and everything gets easier, and I mean, we got so much knowledge and so much power just at our fingertips all day, every day, but people still won't take that extra step to go get information. There's so much information that's readily accessible, but people rather just take it what's being given to them and what's being fed to them and i mean we all know facebook doesn't have our best interest at heart um we've seen that play out okay. time and time again so i mean i just would encourage everybody just just to be careful and, and to do your due diligence and to try to read news from as many sources as you can and i would also encourage people to read news that doesn't even come from america it just it helps you be way more well-rounded and get full views of stories which is why we keep coming to cap, clap back culture every single week to give you information. We hope our hope is that you leave this conversation um, getting different perspectives. And so that's why we like to throw your comments up on the board so we can talk about it. You know, even last week, I mean, my whole thought process on Lori Lightfoot or Lighthouse or whatever the mayor is of Chicago um, you know, my, my view was totally swayed because I got a better understanding of what we were talking about. And so you need the full breadth as much that you can possibly get in one sitting. So be careful about formulating those super strong opinions one way or the other. Um, you know, just having to keep an open mind and do your research, like Mike said. But look, let's take a quick break. When we come back, we need to talk about these gun control laws or lack thereof. Um, you know, Texas is beginning or looking to allow unlicensed, unlicensed carry of handguns. That's no permit, no background checks at the at the tail of the San Jose mass shooting. So we'll take a quick, quick break. Stay right there. We'll be right back. Converge Media produces culturally relevant content for Black and urban audiences. Our coverage is raw, transparent, and objective, praised by community leaders, government officials, and residents. Support Converge Media today via Venmo, Cash App, or PayPal at Converge Media.
some donations big, some donations small, but all donations work the same. So make sure you go to whereweconverge.com slash donate. Drop us a couple bucks and keep us on the air. Or buy a hoodie. Let's drop that merch link, please. <laughs> so please, please, please support y'all. Please support. The governor of Texas, Governor Greg Abbott, is out of his mind, his everlasting mind. I don't know what is in the tea, what is in the smoke, honey, because he is on fire. So Texas, um, the Associated Press reported that Texas is poised to remove one of its last major gun restrictions after lawmakers approved allowing people to carry handguns without a license and the background check and the training to go with it, honey. Let's play it. The Texas governor, Greg Abbott, is expected to sign a controversial gun bill into law. It would mean you can carry a handgun in Texas without having a license, without having a permit, with no background check and no training. Supporters of the bill call it constitutional carry. They argue that requiring a permit or even a license impedes the constitutional right to bear arms. But gun control activists and now law enforcement groups are taking issue. CNBC's Valerie Castro is with us. Valerie, this really does further loosen already soft gun laws in Texas. Shep, the state already allowed people to carry rifles without a license, and now this will apply to carrying a handgun as well. Federal law, though, still requires a background check if you want to purchase a gun from a licensed dealer. But opposition has come from all corners of the state, calling this new legislation irresponsible. Texas State Representative Joe Moody, whose district covers El Paso, spoke out on the House floor over the weekend, recalling the mass shooting at the Walmart there in 2019. One day... And the tragedy will come to your community because we fail to be responsible to the members of our communities across this state. I pray that it doesn't, but it is. I wish it wasn't, but it will. Some law enforcement agencies also oppose the move, saying it puts officers at risk. No license means the vetting process that required a background check and training disappears and puts the burden on the officers to figure out if the person they're dealing with is a law-abiding citizen. I think it makes the jobs of our law enforcement officers more difficult and more dangerous because it shifts that vetting process from the DPS headquarters to the streets in the middle of the night. The NRA has cheered the move, calling it the most significant pro-Second Amendment measure in Texas history. And other proponents point out Texas now joins more than 20 other states with similar gun laws, including Arizona, Kentucky, and Oklahoma. The Texas version is set to go into effect on September 1st. I mean, wow. So you want to just allow people to use a gun without doing a background check and training people how to use a firearm i mean that just seems absolutely ignorant like what where, where are we at what where, what's happening what is happening mike welcome to texas <laughs> <laughs> are we cowboys i mean this is i mean is this a rodeo this is absolutely cowboys right now i mean this is stupid as hell it's the wild wild west out there um, it, it's a tough one too for me because you know I'm pro gun. I, I've always been pro gun. I love guns. I got my license, but this takes. I mean, this is even too much for me. Like I, I don't, I don't understand how you can. I mean, they already allow people to carry rifles, so now you can carry rifles and you can carry pistols. No background check, no license, no nothing. I mean. I don't even understand. They just like deregulated guns. Like it's your right in Texas to just carry a gun. And their governor has already tweeted that he supports it. And he was just waiting for it to get to his desk so he can sign. So like, this is something that is it's happening. And I mean, it's just so irresponsible when you look at our country. I mean, you got mass shootings that happen all the time. You got cities that are, I mean, just struggling with gun violence across this country. And Texas wants to go in the opposite direction. I, it just doesn't make any sense. 
how can you have no background checks? Like the no training piece is a little more understandable in, in states that require license to carry. Most of the times you don't like have to get trained on how to operate a firearm, but you do have to prove that that you're not a felon. I mean, like there, there's checks and balances. I mean, some states have like some mental capacity things. I mean, Texas has just done away with all of it and it's just a free for all with guns. And I just, I worry, <laughs> I worry. Even as somebody pro gun, this is a really, really bad idea. And I hope this bad idea doesn't spread to any other states. There's a few things that I think about when we hear about this piece of legislation. Number one, supporters of the bill are saying that this would allow Texans to better defend themselves in public while uh, not impeding on their constitutional right to bear arms. My question is how, right? So if you feel that you need to carry a weapon, first of all, what are you carrying a weapon out in public for? What is going on that you just feel like you need to draw your weapon at any point? Again, the wild, wild west narrative comes back into my mind. It's just not that serious. Number two, I absolutely believe that there ha there needs to be training in order how to operate a firearm properly, how to store a firearm properly um, so that people understand how to use a firearm when they get into a situation. Because guess what? When you're ready to draw your weapon, it's not the same feeling, emotion, um, sentiment that you're going to have when you are just at at your gun training class. And so you do need to give people um, a little bit of experience doing that. And, and another thing that comes to mind is we're talking about giving people an opportunity to purchase a firearm without a background check. Now, do, I don't care that someone is a felony that is a, is a convicted, a, a former incarcerated person that wants to use a firearm. However, what about if this is a person who has committed a violent crime? How do we know if they've committed a violent crime or not? How do we know if this person has a domestic violence case um, uh, on their hands? What if this person goes and, and shoots and kills his, his, his wife or shoots and kills their husband? I mean, somebody who's been convicted of domestic violence, we absolutely want to know if this person should be able to have the legal right uh, to bear arms, right? Do they uh, forfeit that when they commit crimes like this? So, uh, you know, Texas is, is, is tripping right now. I mean, this is the same state who rolled back restrictions on voting rights. It's the same state that is only allowing women to get abortions after six weeks when you don't even know if you're pregnant um, before six weeks for the most part. And it's just crazy that we're saying we can have this permitless gun law where you don't have to get a background check and you don't have to get, in, get any training on how to use a firearm. This bill is some trash. Julia, I, I agree with every single thing that you just said. I have no pushback. Um, it's just, it doesn't make any sense as well, just from the perspective of if I'm disgruntled about anything, I, you could be mad at your wife, you could be mad at work or whatever. I, I don't believe that you should be able to go in today and walk out that store with a gun today. Like there should be a period of time that everybody should have to wait. I love your idea of training. I mean, how hard would it be to like to have a class, something similar to like, I mean, you can't just go drive a car. It's not that simple. You right. have to take a test to get your driver's license. So why not have some sort of mechanism like that before we give people guns? Um, I I'm also against assault rifles. And, and that's a whole nother conversation. I mean, and I only bring that up because you said people should be able to have guns for what? And my question would be, you need those guns for who? <laughs> because right. that's what worries me. Like, what's going on in Texas where they feel that their citizens all just need the right to carry? Like, all you got to be is 21 and you could just be strapped everywhere you go. That's just one of the most ridiculous things that I've ever heard. So it, it's it's scary, to be honest, because, you know, a lot, I, I don't want to see this spread. We've seen the graphic. This is already happening in other states. I mean, I, I just hope that this isn't a trend that we start seeing where states are just becoming more pro-gun because in the climate that we're living right now, when you look at the next story that we're going to have to talk about, 
We need gun control. We need yeah. more safety with our guns. We need more checks and balances. And to be honest, as much as I say I love guns, I, I would rather give them up than go in this direction, to be honest. You know, I am, I know a lot of people uh, like yourself that mentioned that you enjoy firearms. Uh, you know, a cousin of mine, she absolutely loves firearms, but she is so, so, so responsible. Um, I know gun owners that are very responsible and want their right to bear arms. Um, but these are also the same people that are so well educated. They know about their firearms. I agree with you. Um, that should we, and maybe perhaps if we introduce this uh, gun, this gun training and made it less taboo um, and introduced it more into the culture for particularly uh, brown and black boys who are also, who are very interested in firearms, just like little young white boys, perhaps there would be less killing. Perhaps there would be less, um, need for uh, these gun restrictions because the, the fascination would be gone, that 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 trigger may be gone, uh, no pun intended. So I don't know. Um, I'm not a big fan of firearms. I thought about it the other day. I was like, oh, I want to get my um, my uh, my my gun license. And then I was like, no, I don't. Because guess what? I would never pull my gun on anybody. So what do I need it for? I'm not going to use it to protect myself. I don't want to kill nobody. I don't want no blood on my hands. I don't even want to use it to protect myself. Honestly, if if somebody break into my house, I mean, I'm just going to have to use another means to protect myself because to be honest, I'm probably going to be too scared to use my, my weapon. That's fair. I have a question for you because I, one thing that stood out to me in that clip was the cop. And the cops saying, you know, I mean, it, it just sounds like the police are already angling for fear. But yeah. how do you think this law passing is going to affect the black community? We already see how trigger happy cops are when they deal with black folks. Uh -huh. Now, when those cops in Texas, if they have to say that they thought somebody had a gun, it just feels like it's going to be more of a fair assumption because literally anybody there could just have a gun. I mean, do you think that this will actually make it more unsafe for the black and brown community in Texas? Well, I think there's already a lot of people um, in the black and brown community who may or may not have applied for their gun permit and may or may not be uh, convicted felons who still carry a firearm, um, whether it be for protection for you know themselves or protection for their families. I think one thing though, if this bill should pass, uh, people who are sitting in prisons right now in Texas that um, were locked up in violation for not having a permit should be released. So if this is what we're going to do, we might as well go ahead and make it retroactive and go ahead and let people out who are sitting um, in jails for something that is no longer illegal. Uh, so I think it's a slippery slope. If I have to just make it a quick and dirty answer, it's a it's a slippery slope. I don't know how this will benefit black or in brown people. No, um, I don't mean it. I don't mean it like that. I, I mean it to say, I mean police are more aggressive with black folks. That's just a fact. That's a, that's a statistical fact that's been proven time and time again. I think my worry is police are going to be more aggressive with black folks. If, they, know they, can if they just assume that they could have guns. I mean, we've seen black folks get shot for the assumption of a gun mm -hmm. for having something that didn't even look like a gun. I don't know how that's going to affect the psyche of the police when they have to police us if they know that they're in a community where anybody can have a gun at any time. I it's guess gonna, that's what I was getting at. I think it's going to make law. And, I mean, and that's a good point. And I think it's going to make the, the job for law enforcement officials uh, that much more strenuous. Right. And so I am. Um, this law is stupid. This bill is stupid. It is. It's just it is. stupid. Um, uh, particularly because this is the same, you know, we just are watching another, yet another mass shooting roll out where this guy, uh, Samuel Cassidy, 
um, you know, the mass shooter and the San Jose shooting. Um, he he killed nine innocent people, his colleagues at the Transit Authority. Um, and not only that, but he had so many rounds of ammunition, more than one handgun. I mean, this is the type of stuff that brings back Tracy Jackson's comment where she said, if you compare the United States to Canada, the gun violence is almost non existent. And so let's play a clip. Uh, let's play our clip for the San Jose mass shooting and then we'll come back and wrap it up. A deadly mass shooting at a rail maintenance yard in California. What we've learned about the victims and the suspect. We've been following this breaking story since our newscast at midday. San Jose is the latest city to reel from a workplace massacre. Good afternoon and thank you for joining us. I'm Andy Sirota in for Keith Garvin. And I'm Christine Noel. At least eight people are dead and the gunman is as well. KPRC 2's Mario Diaz joining us live in the newsroom with a word now from investigators. Mario. Christine, another person is in critical condition after this morning's shootings. And authorities say the gunman was a public transit employee. It has happened again, this time at a light rail maintenance yard in San Jose, California. This is a horrific day for our city. And it's a tragic day for the BTA family. Around 6.30 this morning, law enforcement sources say Samuel Cassidy, a Santa Clara Valley Transportation Authority employee, is the person who suddenly started shooting. I can confirm with you right now that we do have multiple victims and we have multiple casualties at this point. Within moments, several people called 911 reporting an active shooter. Officers arrived a short time later. While the shots are still being fired, um, our teams with San Jose PD are still are entering the building while shots are still going off. We attempted rescues. Not long after it started, the sheriff's department tweeted, shooter is down. Some sources tell NBC News Cassidy killed himself after carrying out the massacre. The suspect is deceased at this point. Family members of people who work at the train yard rushed to the scene to find out whether their loved ones were okay. She just gave me a call saying that stuff was going down and somebody was shooting. She dropped her phone and... uh came by to see if anybody was injured and see if I can pick up my mother. Not far from the shooting scene, firefighters battled a house fire they call suspicious. NBC Bay Area reports the home belonged to Samuel Cassidy. Bomb technicians are checking for explosives inside the home and at the shooting scene as well. The FBI has joined local police to investigate the shooter and try to figure out the toughest question, why? I mean, we don't know. We still don't know. We may never know. I mean, this is the same guy who shot and killed nine of his colleagues at um, what was, um, it looked like a union meeting it was reported. Uh, so uh, what do you think? What I mean, are we surprised? I mean, what a coward too, by the way. I hate murder-suicide. Uh, I agree. I mean, it's it's... <laughs> it's America. Like, yeah. This is where we live. This is what we live with. It, it's hard to keep reacting over and over and over to the same thing. I mean, this is this is the state that we have to live in. And then, you know, you see the Texases of the world trying to make it even easier for people to have guns. I don't know what the answer is. I'm not a politician, but I, I don't think the answer is softening the gun laws I, mm -hmm. that just that can't be the answer so my heart goes out to the victims i'm sure we'll probably get more um like you said murder suicide so he's not here to speak on behalf of why he did what he did but it, it's just a sad story all the way around and, and my heart goes out to everyone affected <sighs> i mean I just, we're, one, I'm a little bit desensitized. I agree that we don't need softer gun restrictions. We need to figure out how people will just put the guns down. You know, if it's one thing you want to be a collector and you just want to have guns, but why do you want to have a gun and then go out and kill all your colleagues? I mean, this guy was making over a hundred thousand dollars a year. It's been reported. So it's not like he was hurting. I mean, in California, this is somebody who 
was getting paid 100K a year and still freaked out and set his house on fire before he went out and killed all his colleagues. So it is very sad um, to have to be able to continue to report on these shooting massacres. I mean, you're not safe at work. You're not safe at school. You're not safe in the grocery store. I mean, these are just regular everyday places to be. And at any point, someone can come shoot up even your church. That's the sad part. <laughs> That's the sad part. I mean, why why do we have to live in this country in a constant state of fear? Why do we always have to have it in the back of our mind that every time we walk out the door, you never know if this could be the time for a multitude of reasons. It's just, man, our, our, our nation has so many resources and it just doesn't make any sense why we have to live like this. It's senseless. It's senseless senseless acts of violence, our hearts, our prayers, love and light going out to all of those families and friends, um, that agency to everybody that was lost. I mean, this is mm, heartbreaking. That's all I could just say. It's just heart. It's heartbreaking. Well, look, you guys, we had a great show. We clapped back at everything. Um, you know, we hate to end it on a sour note, but this is America, as Mike just said. So we appreciate you guys tuning in every Thursday. Uh, Mike Davis, where can they find you when you're not here? Uh, you can find me at the South Seattle Emerald. Anywhere you find the Emerald, you're going to find Mike Davis. You could also find me on Twitter at Real M Davis. Uh, and like Julia always says, send us show topics. Send us topics. We'll definitely discuss them. Yes, please. And you guys go read Mike's articles. He's actually a very good, well-seasoned journalist. Um, but you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Treasure of J U L E S. I know a couple of you guys came and followed me. I see you. Um, so thank you so much for tuning in every single week. Go ahead and Wait, come. Real fast. Can oh. we? Uh, can, you, can you shout out this show's Instagram? Oh, Instagram. Go to Instagram at Clapback culture all one word no underscores no nothing at clapback culture uh, we got a lot of new content coming to y'all by way of our show instagram i'll never see it but y'all can see it shout out to to cuddy and everybody else in the back at converse that's working on that for us we love y'all and please 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 go follow us so you can check out some more content all right that's our show thanks for tuning in to clapback culture peace peace